Welcome to Fort Knox. I'm John Fort, once again here at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. It is the day after Apple's massive iPhone 10, et cetera, announcement. They announced more than the 10, but the 10 was the big controversial thing. Number of things I want to talk to you about today, and we're going to go back and forth. We're going to talk Apple and iPhone. We're going to talk with Jin Ko, who is the founder of Original Stitch, who's with me here. But first, today, I talked to Gene Simmons of KISS, uh, who you might remember was on the Fort Knox podcast earlier this year. But he had an announcement today of something called The Vault. He's got new music. He's got photos and a unique twist on fan interaction. Take a look. It's called the GeneSimmonsVault.com. It really is a vault. Cost a fortune to put together. 50,000 words plus photos and everything for my collection. 150 songs that were never released. 150 tracks spanning 50 years. Uh, I co-wrote songs with Bob Dylan. That's in there. With huh. The two Van Halen brothers are on three tracks. That's in there. Joe Perry from Aerosmith, in there. The songs go from 1966, the last century, all the way to 2016, over this century. But here's the deal. GeneSimmonsVault.com. You want one? It's going to cost two grand. Two grand. What I'm doing different. That's like two new iPhones. Yeah, but that's not fun. <laughs> this is fun. But the difference is when you go and buy an iPhone, you got to go to the store. When you buy the Gene Simmons Vault, at my expense, I'm going to get on a jet. I'm going to come to where you are. I'm going to hand deliver this to you in your area. So if it's Finland or Moscow, going around the world with the vault, you go to GeneSimmonsVault.com. You want yours? I come with it. I'm going to bring it with me. That's amazing. Live, the mountain will come to you. That's amazing. So you are literally going to bring this to the... Now, I, I assume you're going to like a, a, a music store or nope. a concert venue. Nope. Nope. You're making house calls? You're going to decide where you and some of your friends, whoever buys the vault in your area, decides if it's going to be at a private uh. home, at a bingo hall, or wherever you want it, you're going to decide. By the way, if I do it at somebody's private home, they may not want the media like this camera over here. See, I'm going to shake it it's up a, and down. It's a nice camera, though. It is a I nice think camera. They... And the guy that's holding it, pretty good looking. <laughs> and so what we're doing is groundbreaking. In the past, if you wanted a port of milk, you had to go out there. Or you could, you know, buy your iPhone, but you got to go outside. Yeah. I'm going to come and fly to you at my expense and bring the vault with me and hand deliver it to you. That's okay. not virtual reality or augmented reality. That's actual Gene Simmons. Now, how, how much of that is because so much of what we're fans are used to dealing with is Instagram, it's ephemeral, it's not real, it's two-dimensional. Yeah, is this I'm, a time I'm when you're here. showing up to be... I'm not here to do anything more for me huh. than in a very real way celebrate what America has done for me. It's enabled me to scale the heights. America has allowed, and the fans, have, has allowed KISS to become the number one gold record award-winning group of all time in all categories. And here we are on Wall Street, where else in the world? This is the hub of finance and the future. It's all right here in Wall Street. It ain't in Zimbabwe. It ain't Mugabe territory. We're right here in the center of the, you know, the finances that make the world go around. So I'm going to give back to the fans. I want, I can afford it. I'm rich. Who made me rich? I worked hard and the fans gave me the money to allow me to do the one thing that's never been done before. The largest yes. box set in history is going to come to you and I'm going to bring mine fly into your area and hand deliver it to you. Now, I was privileged to have you on my Fort Knox podcast back in January. We had a blast, great conversation, so people should listen to that to hear the backstory, some of the backstory on Gene Simmons. Though I didn't know about co-writing songs with Bob Dylan. Did you and Bob Dylan actually get together and write in the same? Because well, you were not emailing back then. That's on the, well, I called him up, and he was kind enough to come over to my house, and we sat around and strung and I recorded it. That's on the box set too. Bob and I talking about it and actually writing the song. That is great. And I'll tell you, the photographer, Vinny, was talking about Gene Simmons calling him good looking all mm. the way back into the building. He's like, ah, oh, that Gene Simmons, mm. such a nice guy. So perceptive. Uh, it's really phenomenal to think. I mean, he's going to get on a jet. He's going to fly around from place to place delivering these things. He is a master marketer, whatever you might think of, of the persona and everything else that Gene Simmons brings. But uh, we had a great time talking to him about that. I, I also talked to him about the iPhone 10, about that $1,000 iPhone, half a vault, uh, as he might call it. He, here are some of his thoughts on a phone that costs that much. People freak out when they move into Trump Tower. People 
freak out when they buy a Rolls Royce. But it's not for everybody. You, you, you get what you pay for. If you want a Volkswagen, go get a Volkswagen. If you want a Rolls Royce, it's not on sale. It's full price. Everything costs money to make. And uh, thus, he argues, there's a market for a $1,000 iPhone. And I dare say there are a lot of Apple fans out there, Apple users, who would agree. Uh, and speaking of the iPhone and some of the new features that are in the latest version of the iPhone and iOS 11, with me I have Jin Ko, who is the founder of Original Stitch. And Jin, a lot of people might not be familiar with your company, but they're mm -hmm. familiar with the arena that you're moving into, custom clothing. We've got lots of uh, different startups that have come out, especially over the last couple of years, online saying, hey, we're going to make custom clothing for you to your measurements, shirts that don't look baggy on you. Um, but you're using augmented reality to do that. What are you doing now, first off? How are you doing it now? Yeah, so Original Stitch is a custom shirt company uh, based in San Francisco to give you the power to look the way you want. Uh, so we combine technology and Japanese craftsmanship to make a custom shirt that is high quality at a, at, 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 at a great price. Uh, so you can use our, our technology to get your sizing done in just a few seconds, and every shirt is then made to uh, fit you properly, and you can customize the different part of the shirt to make the, to, uh, to make the shirt uniquely yours. So welcome to Now you say Stitch. a great price, you say a yes. great price, but Apple thinks $1,000 is a great <laughs> price for a phone, so I gotta yeah. ask. What is a great price for a custom shirt? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 bucks. Oh, it's sub $100. Sub $100, right. okay, it's now it's you're a, talking. Now right, you're talking. so it's $85 for a custom shirt. This okay, um, and where are these made? These are made in Japan. In Japan? In Japan. It's expensive to make stuff in Japan. Yes, it is. How do you do that? Um, but, you know, it's, uh, we, want to, we want to produce the best quality product. That we, that we can produce one by one custom uh, for, each, uh, for each customer. So we, we opt for Japan because of their pursuit of perfection, their craftsmanship, mm -hmm. their highest attention to details, and their machinery and robotics technology to be able to produce these at scale. So let's talk about what the phone brings to the party. So right, right now you've got a process where uh, if I've got one shirt that fits me pretty well, and I want more shirts like that, mm -hmm. I can lay the shirt on the ground, put a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper on it, take a picture? Am take I a taking a picture or shooting a video? Take a picture. Take a picture, and then based on that, you can figure out how to make more. First of all, explain to people why the paper, because that's key, right. and, uh, and, and what, what you're able to do with that picture that you can be sure you're gonna get the right size shirt. Right, so that we, we ask you to put a piece of paper on top of the shirt to get the scale of your shirt. Because we understand the paper is a standard size, uh, US letter size. Uh, from the paper, we understand the scale. From the scale, we can measure your shirt. Okay, so I, I hope we can see some more of that video that, that you, you sent us of your process and some of the stitching together of the shirts. It's, and, and that's, of course, one of your shirts uh, that you've got on now as well. So people will be able to take a look once they uh, view some of this video of the detail around your collar as well. Mm -hmm. But so Apple's got AR kit, right. which is part of iOS 11. And this is supposed to be simple tools, software tools that allow developers to tap into augmented reality on the phone. And some of that is depth sensing. So mm -hmm. IKEA is using it so that you, know, you can virtually place a couch or a chair or a desk in the room and down to the fraction of an inch, be able to tell whether it's actually gonna fit. Am I gonna be able to use that one day with original stitch to be able to do the same thing with a shirt, take a picture, take a video, but maybe without that sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, right. get a yeah. perfectly accurate shirt? Absolutely, so internally we're developing the technology right now uh, to not having the shirt uh, on the, on, uh, the, the paper on the shirt because the, the depth sensing uh, technology will tell you the distance between the camera uh, and your shirt and therefore you no longer need to have the paper on the shirt to, in order to replicate the sizing uh, of that shirt. Now what about, okay, so I, I want to think, think big about where this might take us, especially when it comes to fashion, custom fashion online. It seems to me like I should be able to have a new style digital tailor shop yeah. where I can go on, the tailor's got 
a phone, maybe uh, an Android phone, iPhone, something with depth sensing, and can walk around me, maybe I'm just wearing a bodysuit, and they can take all of my measurements precisely, mm -hmm. and then just have it in the database. They know exactly my arm measurements, shoulder, neck, hips, everything, right? And then you can make clothes that way. If you decide to go into pants, you can do that. I can, uh, I can log into Banana Republic or J. Crew or Nordstrom or, or wherever and plug in my perfect measurements that that tailor has sent me. Is that Absolutely. possible? Oh, yeah. I, th I think that will be possible in the very near future. Uh, and also, what, what could be possible, I think, uh, will be an interesting application of AR kit uh, for the custom clothing space is that imagine I can point. Uh, this designer shirt at original stitch and it can point at you and I can overlay that shirt on you ah, right. So you were able to see that shirt preview before you even place an order So that's another exciting uh, application of the AR kit. Yeah So instead of placing the measurements on the person you can actually place the shirt the on the shirt. person and say Hey, do you like the way it looks turn yes. around and the virtual shirt that's is right. actually sitting on your body? That's right. So think about snapchat filters uh, but but as a shirt on your <laughs> on, on your body instead of a right. unicorn horn or, or cat or, ears or, or whatever it is that they're doing yeah that's right dog <laughs> panting right yes. a, a shirt I can that's actually useful to me <laughs> yes. so when you saw mm. I assume you saw mm. the Apple announcement yesterday I did including the iPhone 10 did you think we've seen this stuff before in various phones mm. did you think revolution uh, in, in new features that are going to allow me to do things with my business or, or, or somewhere in between? Oh, absolutely. I think that, that the, the, the inclusion of a depth sensor uh, into the front-facing camera, uh, one application of that is just face ID, but I think that is just one of the very uh, early uh, stages of what could be possible uh, if you let developers to develop uh, application on top of this depth sensor. Okay. Uh, we're thinking what else? Uh, for example, um, we're uh, developing a prototype uh, where you can take a selfie, we will automatically uh, recognize your facial features, uh, your skin tone, uh, eye color, uh, your jawbone, and from there, uh, AI can tell you what looks good on you, John. Oh, so I see an application here for sunglasses, specific, because mm -hmm. I mean, you never know exactly which sunglasses are going to look good on you. I mean, I know there are, you know, since Web 2.0, there have been these apps online where you can virtually put the glasses on your face, but you can't really turn around. Turn around. You can't really have full 360 degree view and control, but that could change. They can change, right. And also for a lot of guys who don't know what kind of shirt will look good on them, using uh, AR kit and front facing uh, dev sensor, uh, we're able to recommend uh, colors and styles that we think will look good on you. Now, I want to talk jobs and economy as well a little bit with you because sure. you're making shirts in Japan, right. which isn't cheap, and you're based in San Francisco. We are. Which isn't cheap. Why are you based <laughs> in, I mean, if you're doing, I mean, I know you're doing digital and technology in fashion, but you're doing fashion, why are you in San Francisco? There are so many more affordable places where you can be. Right, because we want the best. We want to, to to have the best for our customers. Because we see ourselves as a company that unite technology, fashion, and craftsmanship uh, together into a product that we want to deliver to our customers. Because the future is going to be custom. Uh, that's why I started the company. The future is going to be custom. It's going to be custom. The, the individualism, the personalization, the customization will be the huge trend of e-commerce going forward. And custom shirts are a much better product than the off-the-rack shirts. And I want to make it accessible for everyone. Um, my, my dream is to put a custom shirt in every closet. <laughs> that, that's quite a dream. And I, I know I, you know, since I started getting stuff tailored, yeah. definitely. It's, it's hard to go back. It's, it's hard to look back at the pictures of when I, was, <laughs> when I was wearing stuff that didn't fit me so well in my, in my 20s. I mean, we all have uh, embarrassing pictures. I show them sometimes <laughs> on social media. But I mean, it, it definitely is once the cost gets that, because the cost is the main thing. I mean, yeah. sometimes people can afford one shirt, maybe two. But if you're, if you're talking a whole wardrobe, mm -hmm. it, it gets pricey. That's right. And the reason why we choose Japan is because uh, they have the processes and robotic technology to be able to drive cost down to a level where we can produce at large quantity, even though custom, uh, still at great capacity. And they produce them in a sustainable and ethical working environment. And I believe that people who get paid a living wage are then can fully commit to the quality of the shirt uh, they make. 
Um, I see a lot of people chiming in online talking about a market segmentation. Uh, they're, they're talking about uh, the idea of using it for sunglasses as well and, and how that would work. Somebody says, yeah, because San Francisco is the best from San Francisco. I used to live out in the Bay Area as well, so I can <laughs> yes. definitely embrace that concept. Uh, as you look deeper right. into augmented reality right. and where you expect the technology to go in the next couple of years, I mean, now we're just, we, we've got AR kit for the first time. Mm -hmm. We've got the first phone, at least from Apple's side, that's built for augmented reality. Google also has its augmented reality platform that it's starting to push. Facebook is in it. What are we missing? What's going what's gonna, to, around the corner, you think that's going to come that's going to help businesses like yours sell in different ways? I think uh, the, the critical mass adoptions uh, mm -hmm. of these AR devices will be key because we want to make content that is uh, as widely available uh, through distribution systems, App Store or Google Play to as many users as, as possible. I think, but I think uh, AR kit now available on, on all iPhones, already they are, they are, they are making iPhones the, the largest AR platform uh, in the world, and by November, uh, October, we will see millions of users will suddenly come online with a device capable of, of AR. Uh, and from that point, we will see a lot of developers coming out with their own very creative and innovative AR apps, including uh, Original Stitch. And that, I think, distribution and platform and content combined together is going to push this uh, AR to the critical mass. How many of your shoppers are coming in through a phone versus a PC? Majority. Now, has it always been a majority? You're a young company. Has it always been a majority? It started off uh, from desktop first, uh, and, but we really want to be a mobile first company. And we invest a lot of uh, resources into developing the best experience on mobile, the fastest. Uh, and now, you know, it's, uh, I would say over 70 to 80 percent of our 70 trend. to 80 percent? Yes, yeah. Wow. And yeah. where are the people who are buying from you geographically? They are 70 uh, percent uh, in the United States and 30 percent in Japan. Oh, wow. Okay, because they're made in Japan. Right, so it makes sense. The, the Japanese customers are picking it up as mm -hmm. well. Um, are you able to see kind of more granularly than that who's buying? Is there anything in interesting in terms of demographics? I mean, shirts mostly for men, I take it. That's right. So our core customer base are a little bit younger. They're technology savvy. They're between 25 to 45 uh, year old male living, living in big cities. Now, let's talk entrepreneurship as well. Uh, right. On the podcast this week, the Fort Knox podcast, I have Njava Mutambo, who is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Musanga Logistics. Kind of a little bit of an odd story here. I met Njava when I was at Goodwater Capital uh, right outside San Francisco in Silicon Valley. I was given a talk there. He happened to be there from Zambia. He's, he's a Zambian guy. He's 22 years old. And he was visiting Silicon Valley and the United States for the first time. I talked to him a little bit about how Silicon Valley and, and starting to figure out what Silicon Valley was influenced the path that he's taking. Take a listen. I knew about the companies mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, but the, you know, just the place in itself about 2012. And I was excited by the whole concept of people starting companies, getting funded. 19-year-old billionaires. I mean, we don't even have 50-year-old billionaires. So it's like, <laughs> like, wow, you know, this is definitely um, an amazing place. That's interesting. I never thought about it that way before. So when did you first become aware of the concept of Hollywood? Hollywood? Yeah. Very early on. Yeah. Hollywood very early on because of, obviously, the movies that we watched, the music we listened to. You, you know, the entertainment side of things, you know, we get on very, very early on. But, you know, after high school when, you know, you, for me, picking my career and understanding that I really wanted to be an entrepreneur and, you know, getting excited with the concept of, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, I knew I wanted to do something that's going to be on a global scale. Hmm. And I started looking for the best, right? Um, what made you want to have a global impact? Well, first and foremost, because there's nothing that could stop us, right? Um, you know, I think Africa is in desperate need of successful dreamers. Um, that that will really revolutionize the way that we, as a continent, are going to operate. Um, that in itself, you know, the main reason why, even just the vision from Sangha is to transform the way that people view African startups. If they mm -hmm. see one Zambian startup that goes global, the possibility of you know the mindset shifts because now they'll be like, that guy can do it. I can do it. 
one of the things I learned from Njavwa, and you'll hear it in the podcast episode, about 70% of the cost of online goods is in the logistics, transportation, just getting it to people in Zambia right now. That's what he's trying to attack through Masanga Logistics. It's basically like Uber mm. for stuff. I mean, he's, he's trying to, uh, through bike messengers mostly, but also people with trucks, connect them with merchants who want stuff delivered and get it to people more cheaply. And I tell you, he's got, he says, the, the African cycling champion who's working for him, <laughs> biking stuff across the city is a guy who, when it's biking season, he's out winning awards, but mm -hmm. he found him pumping tires at a bike shop because when it's not the season for competition, he needs to earn a check, and, right. uh, and he's trying to, to make work for people that way. I mean, it's, it's tough out there for entrepreneurs, right? Um, I, I think it's never a, a, a better time to start your own company. I mean, if you have a dream, you have your own passion, you have talents, you work hard, I say go for it. Um, and I really enjoyed hearing just a little bit of your story and original sticks. You're going to look forward to seeing how that goes. I uh, want to go back to the iPhone right. for a moment. A mm. thousand um, bucks. A thousand dollars. For the iPhone 10. 10. You think that's too much? I, no. I, I, I don't think that is, uh, that, that is too much. I, I think... Um, if you factor in, uh, this is a device that you would use almost every five, ten minutes of your life. <laughs> and uh, you will probably have this device for the next two years. Uh, and if you do the calculation, you do a cost per use, is, is, actually, uh, is, is actually worth, worth the investment. Um, yeah. I tell you, that's how I'm likely to calculate. I've got, this is a 6S <laughs> I've got here. Okay. So, you know, when I, I'll just say, when, when I bought this, I got on Apple's iPhone upgrade plan because I tended to be a person who gets a new phone every year. Then the 7 came out, they got rid of the headphone port, and I said, no, nah, not doing it, because I didn't feel like Bluetooth was really there yet. Mm. So it's not like I'm one of those people who automatically is just going to go and buy whatever Apple puts out, but I tell you, mm -hmm. this is my primary computing device now. I mean, when it comes Here to email, when it comes to connecting with people, when it comes to setting appointments and actually making sure I get to them on time. Sometimes when it comes to ordering transportation, when it comes to figuring out what time the train is, I mean, it's hmm. all on this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, more and more I'm paying for food and whatnot through this too, ordering ahead. So yeah, if, if this is gonna help me get something done a fraction faster and I sort of amortize that over a it. year or two, yeah. yes. I'm not sweating it that much. What would you buy, the eight or the 10? I'm definitely, if I, if I upgrade, and if I upgrade to an Apple phone, this is by no means an endorsement, I'm paid by CNBC and no one else, I'm probably gonna go higher end. And there have been yeah. times when I've gone for a cheaper phone, less storage, and regretted it, because, I mean, every interaction, and there's multiple interactions an hour, you feel it mm. if you don't absolutely love the device you picked. So, there we have it. There we have it. The big screen helps too. Having a screen that is the size of a plus in a body that's about this size. Samsung did it first. Give props to Samsung. And Apple is sourcing these OLED organic light emitting diode screens from Samsung in the first place. We'll have oh. to see if they're able to fit their display technology under the hood in a way that makes the screen just as good, better than Samsung is able to turn out kind of display quality wise in the end. But Samsung's the one who really broke the mold with this, who did the full screen phone. They also did the wraparound screen in a way even beyond what Apple's doing with the 10. So you gotta give credit where credit is due with that as well. Uh, one of the commenters on Periscope says, how did we live before cell phones? Um, Musa, Amy, I, hey, I, I'm trying to remember before cell phones. I remember my first cell phone was probably in 2000. I think that was 2000, 2001. When was your first cell phone? My first cell phone was when I was 15 years old. I was using this uh, Motorola StarTac and mm -hmm. these Nokia phones that are just um, all the odd buttons and the best you can do is make phone calls. Remember when the Razor was the hot phone? Yes. The Motorola Razor? Razor. People, people would have paid $1,000 for a Razor. It had that <laughs> metallic finish. That was, the, that was the top feature. It wasn't augmented reality, it was actual shininess. <laughs> that people were paying the big okay. money for. That was crazy. Well, uh, I appreciate uh, you stopping by. Uh, original Stitch, definitely take a look at it. Augmented Reality, mm. Jinko, CEO, founder. founder. It is uh, 
certainly a space that I'm going to continue to watch. And I think once we, once we see more of this custom clothing in women's clothing as well, I think that's probably harder. Yeah. But lots of potential there for sure. Also, another shout out to the podcast, Fort Knox. If you go back a couple weeks, you can see Reed Hoffman, Tristan Walker, lots of uh, founders, investors, innovators. This week, Njavwa Mutambo, the uh, CEO and co-founder of Musango Logistics, way out in Zambia. But he visited us in San Francisco. We got a chance to talk with him. Coming up on the podcast, we have the CEO of Avid, um, Luis Hernandez. He's got a fascinating story. So that's going to post uh, coming up next week. Be sure to tune in for that. Thank you for joining me on Fort Knox Live here from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'll see you next time.